California University. On these three campuses in Morgantown, 16,000 students from 48 states and 51 foreign countries pursue degrees in 50 fields ranging from agriculture, journalism, to law and medicine. Based on tradition with a never-ending quest for progress, West Virginia University reflects the pride of mountaineers everywhere. One aspect of the university, which has developed the interest and enthusiasm of the entire state, as well as alumni and supporters throughout the nation, is Mountaineer football. 1971 football was a prime example. This is Excitement 71. <laughs> A crowd of 31,500 was on hand for the season's opener at Mountaineer Field with the Eagles of Boston College, a veteran team rated one of the best in the East. Watch now as sophomore linebacker Wib Newton alertly recovers a BC fumble. Later in the first period, senior fullback Pete Wood of Bluefield gets the Mountaineers' first touchdown of the season. An area West Virginia excelled in this season was punt coverage, as you'll witness now on a Steve Soroka punt, which was down by Harry Blake on the Eagle One. Time and again, West Virginia sidetracked the Eagle offense. Wib Newton is the man on the spot. With that victory in hand, West Virginia University departed on Thursday on its United Airlines charter to Berkeley, California for a date with Pacific 8 contenders, the California Golden Bears. Sunny skies greeted the Mountaineers upon their arrival, but the Bears were less cooperative than the weatherman. Early in the game, California was able to take advantage of a fumbled punt deep in West Virginia territory. Nine plays later, the California fullback scored from the one, giving the Bears the lead. Safety David Morris from Wayne, West Virginia, recovers a California fumble. The result was a West Virginia touchdown a few plays later by Pete Wood. Sophomore running back Kerry Marbury turns upfield for 16 yards. Denora, Pennsylvania's Bernie Galuffa hits tight end Nate Stevens for another game. A 30-yard field goal by Frank Nestor culminates the West Virginia drive. Mountaineer faithful had plenty to be excited about as they cheered on plays like this. Galiffa finally finds wide receiver Bernie Kirshner, but the drive against the Bears and the clock was too late. 
The only night game of the year came the following week at Richmond, where the Mountaineers used basic offenses and defenses to subdue the Spiders. With Marbury coming out of the backfield as a receiver, Gulliffa connects for 13 yards. An extra effort by Chris Potts of Washington, Pennsylvania gives West Virginia a touchdown in the first quarter. The next two plays by junior linebacker Tom Zakowski emphasize his defensive awareness. West Virginia won it, 16-3. Well, the largest crowd ever to watch a football game in the state of West Virginia was on hand to see the Mountaineers record their fourth win over Pitt in the last five years. Early in the game, a 33-yard pass and run play put Pitt at the West Virginia 24. But then, the Mountaineer defense finally gelled. And on fourth and three, the Panthers had to settle for a field goal. Pitt respecting the speed of Harry Blake left their defense open for short sideline patterns and the first touchdown drive of the day was underway. Great blocking by Bill Samuelson and Kerry Marbury sprang Pete Wood loose for a long gainer to the Pitt 22. Four plays later, Marbury with a burst of speed heads for the corner. game with West Virginia leading 13 to 9, Jack Hines intercepts and returns to the pit six. <laughs> Bernie Galiffa keeps on the option play and the Mountaineers lead 20 to 9. West Virginia's punt coverage features a cast of nine defenders and there's nowhere for a panther to hide. The new Mountaineer scoreboard registered the West Virginia victory. At Colonial Williamsburg, a band of fired up William and Mary Indians led the Mountaineers in the fourth quarter, 21 to seven. Leon Jenkins gives West Virginia new life on a 65-yard punt return to the Indian 13. Three plays later, Marbury goes airborne from the two, and a two-point conversion puts West Virginia within six points. Six minutes later, West Virginia in possession. The option play with key downfield blocking, plus some fantastic broken field running by Marbury, puts the Mountaineers at the William & Mary 25. The option play this time features Pete Wood.
The extra point was blocked, and West Virginia and William and Mary were all tied at 21. With less than three and one half minutes remaining, Galefa uncorks one to Farmington's Nate Stevens for a 64-yard winning touchdown. Almost 4,000 high school bandsmen from the tri-state area were on hand for the East Carolina game. With B.C. Williams of Clifton Forge, Virginia leading the way, Pete Woods scampers 36 yards for a touchdown. The alert West Virginia secondary adds another pass interception to its record-tying season as David Morris picks off a halfback pass at the Mountaineer 42. Junior fullback Brian Childs rambles 25 yards through a big hole for another West Virginia touchdown. Between games, the West Virginia University players can study, relax, eat, or sleep at the plush Twin Towers dormitory on the Evansdale campus. Here, nearly 2,000 students enjoy residence hall as opposed to dormitory-style living. The year-round headquarters for the squad is sometimes referred to as the Evansdale Hilton. Each room at this complex is complete with plenty of study area, closet space, telephone, man-sized beds, and even maid service. Two Mountaineer freshmen, Reed McCollum from Sarver, Pennsylvania, and Mark Eliopoulos of Belpre, Ohio, enjoy the comforts of their own room at the Towers. Towers also has its own cafeteria for the students residing there, in addition to television rooms, recreation areas, and many types of lounges. On October 23rd at Mountaineer Field, West Virginia wins the toss against Temple and another come from behind victory was in the making. This day would see Kerry Marbury rushing for 291 yards, which established a new Mountaineer single game record. Here's 83 yards. As Mountaineer Bob Lowe whipped up the fans, the spirited secondary picked off still another pass, this one by Weirton's Leon Jenkins. Temple was leading 33 to 29 with five minutes to go when Gallipa threw the pass of the decade to Snake Blake which covered 81 yards and gave West Virginia the lead and eventually the victory. Another full house at the stadium and West Virginia puts its 6-1 record on the line against the undefeated Nittany Lions of Penn State. The team and the fans were more than ready for this one. Penn State took the opening kickoff, but soon found West Virginia's Dennis Reed and Billy Joe Mantooth 
exemplifying the mountaineer spirit of the day as they stopped Franco Harris. The enthusiasm of the team was evident in this extra effort of Chris Potts as he struggles for the first down marker. Governor Moore and University President James Harlow watched as the Mountaineers trailing 7-0 started the second half in a big way. Arlington, Virginia's Bernie Kirshner received two passes in a row to move West Virginia to the Penn State 36. Another sophomore receiver, Dave Jagman, takes another Galipa pass to the Penn State 14. Mike Nelson of Payton City ran hard off the right side for five yards. And then Nelson, with great blocking and a tremendous individual effort, tied the score. Again, the defense showed its wares as Mantooth stops Harris for no gain. The crowd stopped the next play. Then John Huffnagel passed in the flat to Lydell Mitchell, but he was met by Mantooth and Tom Geishauser. Then came one of the most controversial plays of the year as Penn State punted to West Virginia and the officials ruled Penn State had possession of the ensuing fumble which went out of bounds. The injury bug began to take its toll, and Penn State eventually had their hard-earned seventh win of the season. The Duke Blue Devil arrived by helicopter at Durham, but the bandaged, battered Mountaineers with new names in the lineup were to find this the most frustrating day of the season. A penalty nullifies this touchdown pass from Galipa to Kirshner. Senior linebacker Terry King set up this Mountaineer touchdown with a timely interception. Brian Childs of Long Island, New York displays great power as he would not be denied. But the Mountaineers ultimately fell to Duke 31-15. Before the final home game against BMI, a busy trainer, Phil Calicut, works on the bumps and bruises of a team with eight starters on the sidelines. It's kind of ironic for you to go down the last day with a big I won't write it. I won't write it. I won't write it. I won't write it. Stunt is when that ball is snapped, you get that area. 
Let me get to the football. Line of scrimmage, stand your ground. You've been knocked off the last two weeks. Stand your ground. No one crosses our goal line standing up. Got that? I don't want nobody to stand up walking our end zone. You blast me. If they start running that power sweep out where they're pulling the guards and the halfback and the quarterback and leading the student body around there, you end up and knock them out of there. Don't sit up there and play handsy with them and give ground and open that all tackle. Knock them out of there. You might not make the tackle, but knock everybody down. Uh, Carlisle Triggers, the pastor at the first, I mean, the Calvary Baptist Church is going to lead our prayer. So good. Mountaineer seniors were honorary co-captains for their final game before the home fans against VMI. One of West Virginia's scoring drives was culminated by quarterback Bernie Galeffa. The speedy Harry Blake of Somerville, South Carolina, again coordinated with Galeffa on another big Mountaineer pass play. Archbold Stadium was the scene of the season finale against Syracuse. Parts of the day were frustrating. The coaches led the players in the pregame warm-up as the team physicians look on from the sidelines. Sophomore John Harcharik shows good speed as he thwarts a Syracuse attempt for a field goal. With time running out in the first half and the score tied at seven, Galippa finds Pete Wood with a short pass for a touchdown. With the score tied in the fourth quarter, the Syracuse runner is hit by Rick Weiskircher, causing a fumble which is recovered by David Morris. On the very next play, frustration again enters the picture. Syracuse is given the football. With the Orangemen leading, the Gallant Mountaineers try to come back one more time on plays like this one to Nate Stevens. And this one to Bernie Kirshner. To Kirshner again, where one more block may have meant victory. A valiant effort by Chris Potts in the end zone is incomplete. The final play for West Virginia. It doesn't seem possible that September the 11th has come and gone, the season's over, and let's just get back and think of some of those games, especially uh, the ones we won here in Morgantown, like the Boston College game. I thought that was the most exciting opener. Jack, uh, I thought we played a, probably our best ball game that day. I, I, I've never had a team, I've never seen many teams that opened any better than we did against Boston College. Had we played that good all year, we might could have won them all. And by that, I mean Errol is free. That just doesn't happen enough. But uh, yes, that was a great beginning of a, uh, and a season that I enjoyed as much as any season I've ever coached. Well, you know, you said way back at the very beginning that you would be exciting and certainly plenty of excitement. We had the, the Pitt Panthers here and that's always exciting. 
Uh, it's always an exciting game with Pitt. That was the most exciting one. And every time I get around the 40 or 45 yard line, I, I get sick. And I suppose you do too when we think about Penn State when the ball went out of bounds after we had them 7 7. Just about right here. Yeah, Jack is right over there. <clears throat> we are 7 and 7. We're 6 and 1 on the year. And looks like we're having a good year. And then uh, we have an unfortunate play. And it seems like it turns our whole season around. Now, I don't want to say that we would have beaten Penn State had we got that fumble, but we might have. And uh, it seems like from there out we had tough luck. I know our last three ball games we had four touchdowns called back. Yeah. Two of those would have won ball games for us. That's right. Uh, just as easily as we went uh, seven and four this year, we could have gone five and six. You know, we won two of them there late, which we could have lost. But also just as easily, we could have gone nine and two. It, it just wasn't meant to be. And I'm hoping that next year, Jack, with all these boys coming back and with a fine freshman team coming up. Mm -hmm. Uh, boys, I think it can give us some physical help. I know we're going to be a better football team. Now, whether we can win as many games, well, I'm hoping to. We better. Right. And, uh, but we'll have to wait and see. Bobby, we have an exciting schedule next year with Villanova and Richmond and William and Mary, the first three home games. Then Tulane, Penn State, and Syracuse. And I, I think uh, if I may sell some tickets, I think people ought to, as soon as those applications come out in March and April, they should get on the ball and get their applications in because it's going to be most exciting, and I don't know what you're going to call it. You had excitement 71, but I'm sure you'll come up with something. Jack, I want it to be exciting, and I want to win next year. And uh, I, I, I hope all of our people will buy season tickets. You know, I'd love to start off the year uh, with all these seats uh, already bought, you know. Right. And I tell you, I, I, I'm, I might be wrong, and I might get fired from making a statement like this, but I think we're going to have the kind of year next year people are going to want to be here. And uh, people who want good seats, I, I hope they go ahead and start buying them as soon as they come available from your department. Well, the roads are getting better, and uh, everything's working out, Bobby, and uh, it's not quite the drive it used to be from the southern part of the state. No, it's much easier to get to Morgantown now, and I'm looking forward to the day we have to enlarge our stadium. Amen. Certainly, plenty of excitement. We had the 